Thank you very much. Let me just uh, switch to switch away from push to talk, actually, because my finger will get numb. Okay, now it should work. I will I will just um, transmit continually. All right. So thanks for for having me. My name is uh, Switch Hecky. I'm part of Redfrock. Um, to be exact, I'm a contract manager and a recruiter for for Redfrock. Uh, contract managers are those that uh, help the directors keep our contract queue clean, um, help our members get sorted. Um, with all the daily doing of, of Red Frog and, um, well, help them, assist them if something comes up that they don't understand or if they get uh, ganked or anything like that. So I can um, appreciate, so to say, the perspective of a newly baked hauler um, that wants to know what that whole hauling business is about. Um, so Red Frog is one of the biggest um, hauling corporations in New Eden. Uh, we are specifically there for hauling. We don't do anything else. We don't do uh, any way of industry or um, uh, stuff like that. We exclusively do hauling and we only do it in freighters. So if you want to have your stuff hauled by a blockade runner, we will talk about what that is. Um, then we can't help you because we really do everything in freighters. A red frog is um, hauling only within high sec borders and only up to one billion isk in collateral. So uh, any shipment that we transport should only have one billion isk in value uh, in cargo. If it goes above that, up to five billion, our sister core blue frog will actually take care of that. Um, also within high sec, and if it goes above that, up to twenty billion isk in collateral. And if you want to ship to low sec or null sec, um, even to um, sov null sec. We can do that as well with our sister corp, Blackfrog, Blackfrog Logistics. So you see, we have we have a whole range of um, stuff we can we can do with hauling, and we will talk about a lot uh, today, um, which is why I want to keep. Uh, well, uh, we will touch many topics, and I want to keep the cop topics relatively brief. We do have a Q and A afterwards, so if there are any questions, um, please uh, note them and. Um, you will have all the time later to to ask them afterwards. I also want to mention that the, that Red Frog is not the only corporation that does a hauling um, in New Eden. There are other corporations like uh, Push X, for example. Um, Push X may be known to some of you because they advertised um, quite frequently uh, on Reddit in the last months. So that might be a name. We don't we don't do that. Um, actually, at the time, we, we do have um, problems getting all our applicants into Redfrock because, uh, well, we, we do have kind of a long waiting uh, queue for, for new frogs that want to join us. At this moment, I think it's 35 people awaiting their chance to, to join us, actually. Um, why do they do that? Because uh, you can actually quite easily earn money um, hauling. Um, but you also have to take some care about doing it. So you can't just sit in a freighter, um, move from A to B uh, on autopilot and expect your ship to arrive. Um, sometimes it works like that, but most of the time it doesn't. And um, to not, um, yeah, to not have a, have a minus uh, in your sun there, um, you should um, know some things about hauling in general know some things about courier contracts, about some problems with those, about threats and scams, and how to easily start with hauling. And that's basically what I want to, want to, want to uh, go over today. I won't really talk much about freighter hauling because, um, well, if you if you go to your ship tree and have a look at the freighters, they are they are on the southeast, uh, down, down right. Um, have a look at freighters, racial freighters, and then see how long you would take to, to train some. Then some newer characters would take around 50 days to sit in, in a freighter, I would say. And um, yeah, you could 
then actually use some support skills. So, so I, I want to talk about something that you can actually use um, right now, tomorrow, if you want to. And um, well, that's what I'm here today for. So I do, I'm, I'm, I'm in the chat. I hope everyone is in the chat room as well, because there I will um, maybe put some links or some ship types or something like that. Um, so I will mention uh, when I put something in there, so you don't you don't miss it. But I'm glad that we have the chat. Um, sometimes screenshots talking about the same window uh, can actually uh, help very well. So let me start by talking about the well basic concept of hauling um, hauling within the uh, world of New Eden. In New Eden, you have those people that are most uh, prominent in trailers and uh, videos on YouTube. Those are uh, solo or fleet PVP players. Um, that's what new, well, what interested people see in New Eden. That's what they read in the online articles. And those big fleets lose a lot of ships. So if you if you have a look at those battle reports that sometimes get posted to Reddit or on other sites, you see that. 20 billion is lost and then 50 billion is lost or something like that. And um, somewhere those ships have to come from. Um, so there are, of course, producers that produce those, those ships in New Eden. Um, then again, those producers need materials. So there are those who mine the stuff and refine it. Well, and some at, at some point, you will have to move um, those those minerals, for example, to the production facility. If it's in the same system, that might be all right, but you have to move the completed ships and modules from your produ production facility to a trade hub where you actually can sell them for the most amount of ISK because you want to make ISK. That's that's uh, what, what everything is about in EVE, right? Um, people will talk about the friendship, but uh, in the end, everyone wants to pay the bills. And um, yeah, uh, we, we should stay realistic there. Uh, so they they do some kind of calculation and see okay I, I produce uh, nine jumps from Jita and I want to t uh, sell my stuff in Jita. Now how do I get my stuff there? Maybe they produce small frigates and um, they can sit in there. They have skills um, to actually fly those to Jita, but uh, well. It, with frigates, that, that might be okay, and with cruisers or something. But if you talk about battleships, or if you talk about uh, T2 ships, like command ships, or any other, other thing, that is not really feasible. So you have to pay someone to transport them, or transport them yourself in a big ship that actually can put all the stuff that you want to move in it. So if you, um, if you in your client, open your ship tree. I hope every, every one of you is online actually right now and logged in. Um, if you open the ship tree, there is no shortcut for that, I think. It's um, in your sidebar, roughly in the middle. So if you open your ship tree and click through the four races, it, it doesn't matter which race you pick, pick Kamar, Kalari, Galento, or Minota, uh, and go to the lower part of the ship tree. There is one line that actually starts with the shuttle and it goes to the right, and there you see an industrial section. So CCP made it easy for me today to talk about hulls, um, about ships that carry other things, uh, because they put uh, them quite prom prominently at the bottom of the ship tree, uh, separate to those ships that actually can fight, that can fit guns or something. Well, those can also fit guns, which is uh, sometimes very funny. You can see those uh, online as well, uh, but uh, we don't fit guns in Red Frog. So there you see industrial ships, and those are actually ships that you use. They have a big enough cargo bay to transport other ship hulls and modules from A to B. So that's hauling within the, the uh, industry part of New Eden. You are, as a hauler, responsible for bringing um, stuff from A to B. Now, I talked about someone who produces and wants to sell in Jita and um, wants to pay you for transporting the stuff, nine jumps, to Jita. Normally, you would do that. Uh, well, if, if you know someone who holds and if you trust him, you could just um, trade him the ships and he transport them and trades them back in, in Jita. But that's not the normal case. Normally, you need some kind of um, trusted in-game 
um, function for that, some, some kind of functionality. And actually there is maybe, oh yeah, spoon, that's actually quite quite correct. What you, what you said in Frick, 500 Fricks one by one, that may take a lot of time. Uh, you can actually cut that time really, really short if you just put it into a holder and put them all there at, in, in one hole. Um, otherwise, those those trans transport ships and and um, industrials and especially freighters are very very slow. Um, you will you will see that maybe in your career one day they they really they warp slow they move slowly and that's of course also a threat. But more about that later. Um, well, there are um, there are contracts that CCP prepared for. Um, for us, the players, that are especially um, suited for transporting from A to B. You know contracts, and if you open your contract window, it's um, in the Eve menu, uh, you go to business and contracts, you can actually make a new contract, and then you see that you can um, select whether you want to make a um, item exchange contract or a courier contract. And also an auction, but we won't talk about auction today. So courier contract is actually that um, what we what we talk about um, today with hauling. Courier contract is a well. Let's put it like that. It's Red Frog. No, no CSP gave us the opportunity to officially announce that we want to have anything or something moved from A to B. And they gave us the possibility to do so without risking too much. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, I will put a contract. Let's, mm, that's not actually possible there. I will make a screenshot of a contract. Um, one that I, for example, transported for Red Frog. I have to see if I can easily delete the customer there. Because there are some concepts about contracts um, that are quite uh, important um, before you start. Let me have a look. Okay, uh, this was actually a customer that announced that he was okay with, he actually announced his contract to to our channel. So that's that's quite all right if I post it here. So I have, I've posted a link um, to a contract that I've um, flown for Red Frog Freight. Um, yeah, that's a nice one there as well, if we can open it. Yeah, Tosuru. Thank you very much. We can also use that. It's the same window, basically. So what you see is um, there's a type. It's a courier contract. It's issued by some kind of customer. In this case, it's Tosuro. Uh, with the availability, you see it's public. Um, for Tosuro made a public contract, so anyone can pick it up. Um, in my link, you will see that it's a private contract. It was made to, out to Red Frog Freight, which is um, the corporation I'm in, which is what we want the customers to do, obviously. Then there is a contractor in my window. Well, that is because the contract is actually finished. Um, if a contract is finished, you see the contractor. Uh, with uh, Tozuro's contract, it's not accepted yet. You have a location. That's where the stuff is you want to move. and at the bottom, you see a destination. That's where you want the, 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 the stuff to move to. And now the, the, the last three lines, I'd say, or the most important three lines uh, for any hauler, four lines, we actually see in Tosuro's contract. We see a collateral, we see a reward, and we see the volume. Those are very important for you to know because reward is actually what you receive when you bring the stuff from A to B. When you arrive and uh, dump it there and tell the customer that, you, that you've that you arrived and you, you complete the contract. That's what you get. Uh, in my contract, you see that I got um, 27.5 million ISK for that contract, which is a yeah, uh, comparatively big, well, it's a, it's a high reward. 
Um, but as you see, it was 16, a 16 jump route, which um, actually takes a lot of time. Then you have a collateral. And if you have a look at my window, you will see that the collateral was actually 1 billion isk. Um, the collateral is a function that CCP put in because if someone uh, picks up your cargo at um, the starting location and then simply does not deliver it and uh, breaks the contract, he keeps the cargo because it is in his cargo, so, so he can actually have it. If you put a zero collateral contract out in public, that will happen to you in a matter of seconds, actually. So never do that. Um, the collateral is there for you to receive if the um, if the customer or if the sorry if the the delivery agent let's call him like that um, cannot deliver by any means uh, because of any reasons um, he might uh, have been shot um, at a hotspot by Gankers. he might just simply forgotten that he has to has to um, move it or he might one of might be one of those evil guys that actually um, well wants to be rich on the cost of others, so to say. So collateral is, is extremely important because um, you tell the game how much ISK you want if he does not complete the contract. You can put one Tritanium in a contract and set a collateral of one billion. The game is totally fine with that. And um, well, that's, that's obviously one of the problems I want to talk about. Um, so. You, in, in the event that someone gets ganked with your contract aboard, he has to fail the contract because he can't deliver it. It's not in his cargo hold anymore. Um, and what happens then is that you get 1 billion ISK. And who pays that 1 billion? Well, that's the one who moves it. So anytime I move a contract for Red Frog Freight, I have to pay 1 billion into a game uh, escrow. It's basically a game function that uh, keeps the money as long as the contract is not completed or failed. If I complete the contract and deliver the cargo, I get my collateral back. If I don't complete it and fail it or the customer fails it, he gets the uh, collateral. Um, I, I just said that you can put one Tritanium in there and insure it, so to say, for one billion collateral. And sometimes, um, that's being done and we will talk about the threats and scams um, later um, if you are if you are so inclined you can just you can just make one of those courier contracts then sit at a gate and wait for your courier contract to come through because you know who accepted it and so on and then shoot the guy he has to fail it and you just um, made one billion isk by doing nothing just shooting at a ship and maybe get concorded so that's that's one kind of scam they run um, we have to be careful for that and there are ways to um well see if if it is such a contract one uh piece of information that's also very important um, is the volume because your ship is actually only able to to transport a maximum um, amount of um, volume in your cargo hold and you have to know that number very well you have to know that number very well with the uh, different fittings that you can choose for your ship you can make it a bit more uh, agile um, but then you lose uh, quite a significant amount of cargo hold you can make it uh, you can make the cargo hold very big but then you lose agility so you have to um, know those numbers you have to know your maximum amount of cargo and how risky the contract might be if it's a high collateral contract you might want to have a faster ship for example to run away run away more well more quickly um but you should know those numbers and if you have a look at uh, tosuro's contract in in uh, opposed to mine tosuro's contract is about f 500 um, um uh, a volume there and um, that's not quite the number that I transported here to um, to Shoes Run. It's uh, one, yeah, it's it's roughly um, two hundred thousand cubic meters of cargo. Of course, that's not possible to transport in anything but a freighter. Um, Red Frog, by the way, transports up to eight hundred forty-five thousand cubic meters. So that's really a lot of stuff you can put in in one of those freighters. 
Um, another very important concept about uh, courier contracts is actually shown at Tosuro's contract a lot better than, than in mine. You see that there is an expiration date and a completion time. Expiration date tells you how long the, con the, the one who co created the contract uh, wants to wait before anyone accepts it. And the completion time, complete in, um, says how long you have time to complete the contract. Uh, also there, you have to be careful if it's a very long route, um, you, have, you, you could have problems getting there in, in the amount of time given. Um, so you all, all should always be um, aware of the competition time and ask yourself if you can really do it. What you can't see right now in his contract is, uh, because it's a contract that goes f through high sec. It's, it's a completely high sec route. If it goes through low sec and null sec, it will tell you actually at the bottom um, with a little information window, careful, this contract goes through low sec and high, uh, null sec. Um, for you to know, okay, that, that might not be the, the, the way I want to take. Um, those contracts, by the way, are um, quite often um, contracts of scammers. They um, make a contract to a low sec system that is just one jump into low sec. So you, you don't actually have to go through low, low sec all that much. Um, but that's exactly the gate where they will wait for you. Um, and you don't get the reward, of course, if you can't deliver the cargo. So they might um, want to get you to take the contract with a very high reward, with a very high um, reward promise there. Oh, Tosuro made us a contract to <laughs> Thera. Actually, that's unreachable in this case. Of course, Thera is reachable if you know uh, where to go. That's wormhole space. So that's uh, quite a lot, a lot of jumps you have there, Tosuro. I won't accept that contract, unfortunately. All right. So I talked about um, some problems already with courier contracts. And one of the problems was actually, well, it's pr very prominent, actually. It's one of the prime examples why courier contracts in their current form are a bit problematic. You can put one Tritanium in the contract and insure it for one billion ISK. That's fine, okay, if somebody wants to do that. But the one who thinks about accepting the contract can't see what's in the contract before he has accepted it. So only if you accept a contract, you will see what's in it. And of course, that's uh, problematic in, in two ways. One, the way I already described, no one would accept a contract of one Tritanium if there is a collateral of one billion in it, because it, it, it well, it has all the uh, prominent marks of um, scams uh, there. But the other way is also pretty, um, it's, it's actually pretty dumb from the customer side, but it happens more than often. Um, a customer puts 5 billion ISK of cargo in a 1 billion ISK collateral contract. Um, that makes the risk of being ganked a lot higher. Um, actually, it's, it's very, very, very high <laughs> after that. And some customers, they, well, I ask, I ask as a contract manager, I, I do follow-ups with such customers and I ask them what they, what they thought. Why, why? Did you do that? And most of them say uh, that they talked to a friend in Eve and they advised them to use Redfrock because they never get ganked. So that's that's their excuse, so to say. Which is, of course, um, for us, it's it's kind of a compliment, but it's simply not true. We get ganked a lot, really. So there is one problem with courier contracts. Another is uh, if you put a container in a contract that um, has items in it, then you can't um, easily move the stuff from one player to another. Why would you do that? That's um, what I talk about later. Uh, at this point, I want to um, I want to shamelessly advertise um, the <laughs> um, candidacy CSM candidacy of my uh, of my colleague uh, RF Gneus Crassus. You might know him from the e FanFest 2015 presentation about Redfrock. He's uh, he is a candidate for CSM and he wants to have some well, he has some ideas for for new contract mechanics and 
well, of course, we at Red Fox support him because those ideas are pretty great for the hauling business. All right. Well, that's the the contract part. So if you if you are a if you are someone who who just wants to start hauling, you can just go to your contracts window, uh, have a look at available contracts, select uh, courier contracts, and um, get a list of all the contracts nearby. Uh, see what kind of reward you get, and. Um, you might not be too satisfied with it because it's not really a, a very high reward in most cases. Um, that's not because the high rewards aren't there. They, they just get picked very quickly by, by anyone who monitors the, the, well, that, that queue, basically, or that window. There is another way of making easy money uh, with hauling, and that's inter-regional hauling. You may know that if you check a price in your market, in your regional market uh, window, you only see the prices from your region. And you may also know that if you move to another region, the prices are actually quite different. So um, Amar and Gita is a, is a very good example because they are close together. If you have, um, if you have a price for, let's say, Tritanium and Gita, then the price in Amar may be 20% above that. And sometimes you have the situation that something that is available in Jita for a low price has a higher buy price in Amar. So you might buy a Tritanium in Jita for four ISK a piece, and you might sell it in Amar for six ISK a piece. So that's, um, that would be quite some profit there if you if you have a lot of if you have a lot of, um, well, if you have a lot of cargo space available to transport all the tritanium. So we will have a look at that kill me later when I talk about fitting issues. <laughs> we will talk about that. Um, okay, so you can, you can move stuff from A to B without anyone telling you, just because you think it might be a good deal. Um, and there are, there are tools to help you with that. You don't have to scan the market. Uh, there are actually tools that can help you with that. Let me just have a look at one of those. I will link it for you. Um, let's say, uh, I just have made a very long link here. Uh, that is actually the, the case I just talked about. I'm looking for deals from Jita to Amar. And what you see here, if you open the link, it's, it's, uh, if you, he, he tells you that there are 3,227 possible routes, so possible uh, things to transport. So for example, there is a, an item that's called Hayas Yoda Research Laboratory, um, the first result. It's selling Wait, let me just um, shut up Switch Junior there for a moment or shut him out because I will close the door. Wait a second. All right, back again. So you see that um, in Jita, you can uh, buy this laboratory for 111 million ISK and sell it in MR for 115 million ISK. The pro problem with that would be a, a, a um, there are three tradable units and you could have a profit of 9.3 million ISK uh, just by moving the stuff from Jita to Amar and nobody told you so. It's just a difference in price and you can use that difference in price. Your actual profit would be a bit lower because you have to pay taxes on that though. Those are, um, well, um, untaxed values because taxes vary because of your skills. But um, yeah, that would be an interesting deal. And of course, you you can also put more stuff in. For example, you you put three laboratories in, and then you do you go to the next item. It's a general illusion core augmentation. That's an implant. You put that in as well, and then you put the Caldari Navy adaptive and vulnerability fields uh, in there as well, and you can make a nice profit of about forty million with one haul. Then again. 
you see that the Caldari Navy Adaptive Invulnerability Field has a cell a value of 372 million isk. That's a lot for for everyone. And well, we, we already um, touched the topic of threats here because there are people that speculate on other people to take those opportunities to do interregional hauling. And they wait for them at choke points at certain um, systems. I will tell you the systems later because um, they are quite prominent. Maybe you know some of them already. Um, you have a look again to sort of where you... No, you were shot in a mar actually. So that's that's not not one of the choke systems where we talk about them later. So that is another way of making profit with hauling. But you have to be very careful with that. Um, well, yeah, because you can lose a lot of ISK there. But you are also very flexible. You can get the deals um, anywhere where you are, right? Okay, let's talk about um, ships for a moment. Uh, I think most of you already have the ship tree open. If not, please uh, do so. Um, the nice ship tree uh, that CCV gave us. So in the lower section, you have the let's let's well let's call them haulers. You can categorize haulers into th now let's say five categories. Um, the first category is the the first one you actually see following the line is the industrial. Um, that is for Amar, for example, it's the sigil and the bestower. For Kaldari, it's the badger and the Terra. Um, Galenta actually, oh, well, they don't have two; they have five because Galenta, right? And uh, Midwata also has three, one more than the other uh, two that I first talked about. Those are T1 industrial ships, and you can, well, very, very quickly sit in them. They don't take a lot of time to train into, so you can start right away with hauling. Um, why does Galenta have five um, ships? Well, because uh, the Galenta Federation thought it would be a good idea to have ships that are built for a special purpose. Sometimes you move minerals, sometimes you move. Um, well, some produce from planetary interaction. Um, sometimes you move, what do they have there? Uh, sometimes you move, you move uh, general stuff. And um, well, that's just what they what they thought would be would be good because they have five different ships that are all bonus for five different um, well different um, things to move, so to say. They have different cargo base that are made for special items. Uh, if you are not, um, if you are not the, if, if you if you want to be independent of what to move, you can either have one of those five haulers at your um, normal route, or you pick one of the other uh, one of the other ships, like like uh, those that are. Um, general, the Itron Mark V is the same for for Galente, and the other Amar and Kaldari ships are also not specialized in anything you want to transport. So that's the first category: racial T1 industrials. Then you have directly above those, you have um, the the category called transport ships. But actually, those are um, those two ships that you see there are actually quite different from each other. Um, they have different purposes. They have different uh, ways of fitting. Uh, and so you actually have to, to, to subcategorize them, so to say. One is called a blockade runner. Oh, and they also have separate skills. You, so you don't just skill transport ship and you can sit in it. They have different skills. So one is called a blockade runner. Blockade runners are um able to fit a covert ops cloaking device which makes you able to warp cloaked that's pretty nice uh and you have deep space transports deep space transport pods can 
um, fit a lot of tank. They they are the holders with the most tank actually. Um, they can fit an insane amount of tank. They do have uh, a bonus to warp core strength. So even if you are scrammed by one scram, warp scram, uh, you can still warp away. And um, they can also fit a micro jump drive, um, which is pretty nice. So you can just jump from from your from your threat, so to say. Uh, also, they they um, get a bonus to repair. Um, modules and that's uh, that helps your tank of course if you get shot so that's uh, deep space transports if you go to the right then you see that there are two kinds of freighters that's one is the the normal freighter um, it warps gate to gate um, anywhere it goes and then you have a jump freighter jump freighter has a capital jump drive uh, by the way, if we talk about freighters, we talk about capital ships. You might have seen them flying around in space. They are really, really big. They are terribly slow, and they are capital ships in any sense of the way. So if you if you put a freighter next to a dreadnought or a carrier, you see that they are actually quite a similar size. And capital ships do have the possibility to, to jump without using stargates. That's um, something I will talk about in a in a different lecture, I, I, I guess, um, because using dunk, jump drives is a whole other business. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, there are so many things you, you, you should know about them. It, it's, it's, it's okay, you can use it, um, but you should know what you're doing. Also because if I just check the ARC freighter, the CMR freighter in Jita, you would have to pay 7.3 billion ISK for just buying that ship. Um, and that's not calculated. The skill books, that's not calculated, the collateral. So you can play EVE for six months instead of buying that ship. So that's that's a lot of ISK right there, a lot of value. And you, do, you don't want to lose it by doing some kind of stupid mistake. Um, there is a category five. Um, it's kind of specialized. Uh, but I want to talk about it briefly. If you go in your ship tree, if you go to the, the fifth symbol on the upper left um, from the races, you see that's the ORE, the Outer Ring Excavations Corp. It's an NPC corp, and they do uh, they make their own ships. You know your uh, mining frigate, your venture from those. Maybe you've fl flown mining barges already. Um, there is a industrial command ship. That's the Orca. The Orca gets... Um, used quite uh, regularly for hauling as well. Um, they hauling minerals and so on. And you have the bowhead in the lower right. The bowhead is a freighter um, for ship hulls, basically. It, 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 it's, 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 it can fit a lot of ships in it. And that's what, we, what you move it, with it. So if I have a look, yeah, it's 1.3 million cubic meters for ship. Um, well, just for ships, you can you can put um, other stuff in it as well. Of course, it has some other base, but its main purpose is to to move ships. So most important for you, of course, are um, Rachel T1 and Rachel T2 industrials. So um, I already talked about uh, the different ship roles of T2 um, a bit, but um, you have you also have um, different roles in your T1 ships. Um, that's the, well, that's the answer to the question: Why are there two if the cargo bay is not bonused in any way? You have two ships. Um, they do quite. But they are quite different in their purpose. For example, the sigil. If I if I just use Amar as the first icon, I just clicked on Amar and I um, had a look at the sigil and the bestower, um, and I compare them, then I see that the sigil is actually um, a bit more agile. Than the bestow, bestow, so it, it can go into warp faster. It can move around faster. It's easy. It's harder to catch, but it doesn't have the cargo capacity of the bestow. Actually, it has um, less than half of the cargo capacity of the bestow. Bestow is bigger, 
but the sigil is faster. So you have to know what do I want to transport. Um, do I want to transport a lot? Then I need a, I need a bestower, but I have to be aware that I'm actually uh, quite slow doing so. Or do I want to move um, smaller stuff, but be a bit more quick about it and have a fit that allows me to, um, well, get get off from the gate, so to say, as quickly as possible? Because that's um, that's where you get um, ganked most. Um, there is a compare tool in Eve. I don't know if you know that uh, already. If you don't, you should get to know it because it's pretty awesome for any kinds of uh, purpose. So if you have a look at the Neocom menu, that's the, the little E on the upper left, uh, there is one option uh, kind of in the halfway uh, to the bottom. It, it's called compare tool. Um, you should click that. And then you can put any kind of item uh, on the right side. You can drag a module there. You can drag a ship there. And you can actually um, drag the ships directly from the ship tree into the compare tool. Um, and then have a look at what you want to compare. You can compare um, tank, like uh, armor or shield or something like that. Um, and you can compare speed, for example. You can ca compare cargo capacity. So that's that's a pretty useful tool for anyone who wants to know um, what is what how how good a, a certain ship or module is compared to other ships in the field that you want to to use it. Actually, All right. Um, so you have different you have different ships, and I now want to talk a bit about um, threats. Um, how do you actually do that? How do you hold? Well, you put a cargo, of course, in your ship. Then you undock with your ship and you start to move. Uh, let's see how Tosuro was uh, well kind enough to to give us his his kill there. I'll link it again for anyone who joined us afterwards. So what happened there? Tosuro put quite some value in his ship. It's a T1 hauler. And yeah, that's that's quite a lot of value there. Um, and I think Tosuro would have made a decent profit with it. I think you said sixty million, right? So that's uh, that's pretty much. Um, but then there was one guy. He's called Darzine. Ah, yeah, Tosuro, thank you for that. Um, very good service for for the new bro month there. Um, no. Uh, there was one guy, Dasein, um, who is um, part of Noob Corp Incorporated, and he was sitting, I, I guess, he was sitting at the undock of Omar with a tornado, and what he does is he scans ships coming out the undock for their cargo value. And if the cargo value is higher than the value of his own ship, the tornado, which is a battle cruiser that can a lot of it can do a lot of alpha damage. Um, then he locks you and shoots you because um, you can shoot T1 haulers pretty easily with uh, with a battle cruiser. It's basically a one shot. It's a high alpha, as we say. Um, so you get a lot of damage and you you pop and that's it. In this case, you see that only the green um, the green modules or the green stuff has um, actually dropped here with this kill, but that's still 160 million that um, Dasein made in this case for, mm, let's say he spent, well, he spent maybe 70 million or something like that for his tornado. So that's quite a nice profit there. How could Tuzuru do anything different? Because you have, well, first, you have to be aware that there are those people. You'd never see them because um, CCP has made a module and they use it that sh that doesn't show um, cargo scans. It doesn't show um, that you are being targeted. If you undock, then someone can just lock you, ship scan you, have a look what's in your cargo, and decide whether to or not to to engage. Thanks to Suro, it's a nice. Uh, I have a nice assistant here today. The passive targeter actually doesn't show you that little yellow box if someone targets you. So that's what they do. And you have to be aware that 
they are everywhere. They are sitting at gates. They are sitting at the trade hubs. If you undock at Jita, you will be scanned like eight to 10 times before you actually go into warp. Um, any gank crew that is uh, on the way or in system uh, knows what you are carrying. That's something you should just be aware of. You, you have a possibility to not be scanned if you're lucky. Um, and we, we will talk about that uh, in a second, but you should just be aware of that. Normally, um, at a trade hub, at the undock, they don't shoot you right away. Um, well, I don't, I say normally, well, they do it quite often, but they have other methods. Um, because when you get shot at the undock, anyone can theoretically pick up your cargo. Of course, they would go suspect, so you can shoot them again, but um, anyone could pick up your cargo that, that you lost. So they will try to find uh, a place where it's not as risky, where they are, can be sure that they are the ones who pick up the cargo. So they scan you, and then they have a look at where you go. So if you are in a MAR and you walk to the Ashab gate, then they know that you are probably on your way to Jita because that's the way to Jita. Um, and what they do then is they wait two systems further um, with two ships. One is for shooting you and one is for looting you, so to say. So, because Concord, of course, will be involved. That tornado will be lost because Concord comes and shoots him here because it's high sec. But they will wait for two systems where there, are, where, where there are not that many people on the gate, where it's surprising for many people, and um, that's where they will uh, want to gank you. And they will gank you not when you land on a gate, because they can't stop you from landing on a gate. If you if you warp to a gate in, in HiSec or anywhere, the game mechanics actually, well, there are people who, who say that's not actually true, but they gar guarantee that you land uh, within two 0.5 kilometers of the gate, and that's the range that you need to hit jump and jump immediately. So that's where you are safe. Where you are not safe is when you start, um, when you are on the other side and you you go into warp again because your ship has to turn and accelerate. Um, well, it well the game mechanics again. It doesn't actually have to turn. It just looks like it turns, but it is a, at a at a standstill. The the vector mechanics of the game. Well, the game shows you that it turns, but it doesn't actually, in game mechanics, turn. But it has to accelerate. So the faster your ship accelerates, the faster you go into warp. You go into warp when you have reached 75% of your uh, maximum speed. Um, that gives the that gives gankers, those that want to shoot you, um, between three and 15 seconds of time to, to shoot you. Uh, one will lock you and shoot you, and the other one will immediately immediately uh, loot you. That's when you are in a T1 hauler. Um, different ship hulls um, provoke different tactics on the gankers. Um, with, a, with a freighter, let's talk about that for a second. That's uh, something that we have to care about. With a freighter, it's done quite differently because for a freighter, you need a lot of um, firepower to, to kill because we are um, actually pretty, we are pretty big. We are pretty slow, but we are also pretty big. And you, you would need, let's say, well, 20 to 25 ships on the gate to shoot a freighter. But you don't have 20 to 25 ships sitting around the gate. Um, normally, uh, because those ships are often um, qu used quite regularly for ganking and they have status that makes you attack them. And they, of course, don't want that. So they will maybe be in system, maybe they will be in another system over. So when your freighter arrives and you uncloak at the gate to go into warp, they will have uh, another ship. Mostly it's, it's well, there is a, there is a meta, there is a standard, so to say, and mostly it's a Macarial. So if you are using a freighter and you see a Macarial sitting at the gate, you know that you will be bumped, and that's what they do. So you uncloak, and the Macarial will just drive into you with high speed and um, break your alignment from the gate. So will he, he will push you in a different direction, away from your warp vector. 
And they will do that until the fleet arrives that is there to gank you. Or they will do that until you ask them how you can go away, and then they will tell you, okay, well, well, just pay me 200 million and I'll let you go. That's their normal um, tactic. And some of them will actually let you go. But of course, that only encourages them to, to do that because they did nothing. They just hit approach for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and you and get paid 200 million, right? So that's nothing we should encourage. But they will bump you out of alignment. They might do that as well with uh, slow T1 um, haulers or um, a deep space transport, for example. Um, anything that can't go into warp, warp very quickly. There are systems that are especially at risk for something like that. And those systems are... Um, prominent systems on trade routes because you can't get around them. Uh, one of those systems is on the trade route of um, Amar to Jita. It's the Niarja system. It's a 0 0.5 system, which means that um, re uh, Concord will respond slowly, comparatively slowly to, to other systems. And if you set Niarja to, to avoid, if you, if you don't want to use Niarja in your navigation, you will have a hard time because you have to go through low sec actually, or um, all around <laughs> New Eden uh, and add, well, let's say 40 jumps, I think it is, to your, to your um, trip. And the other system that is very prominent for ganking is Uedama. Maybe you've heard that one as well. Um, there are groups that are quite active in those two systems. Uedama is also a 0 0.5 security system. It's also one of those choke points because you have to go through them if you move from Jita to Heck or to Renz or to Dodixi or anywhere you, you go actually <laughs> in, in your um, space travels. So I'm a bit... I'm a bit lagging behind in time, actually, uh, but I want to talk about threats and countermeasures a bit more. Yeah, Tosuro, thanks again. You you read my mind. Uh, there are certain groups in New Eden that want to uh, shoot you out of different reasons, actually. Tosuro linked one. Um, that's code. Code is uh, referring to the code of James 315, I think it's called, uh, the code of Halaima. They are role players, first and foremost. Most of them are. Um, and they say that there's a guy, James, uh, who said that he uh, rules HiSec. And anyone in HiSec has to follow his rules. That's the code. You might have encountered them as a miner. They also go after miners quite frequently, but they also go after um, anyone that autopilots and anyone that, well, is what they call a bot aspirant. So if you mine AFK, you actually, you, you, you are showing bot behavior, like, like a robot, uh, like a program, and they are obliged to, no, they are, they are, it's their duty to shoot you. That's their role play, basically. They can't really answer why they shoot freighters that are not moving on autopilot and are not AFK, but I think sometimes it's about the money, um, more about the uh, than 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 about the role play, but many of them I, I I've talked to many of them on on Eve meetings and so on. So they are pretty pretty nice guys. They just play the game, and they they role play it a bit. It's it's quite fun. Uh, there is also very prominently Goon Swarm. Goon Swarm gave themselves the mission to ruin your game. Um, that's what they what they what they uh, talk about all the time. And so if there is a good kill to have they will go for it. They will go for it in catalysts. They will go for it, for it in Talos's ships that can really dish out a lot of damage. Code and Goonswarm are the most prominent groups. There are more um, in, in other systems as well. If you go through Isanamo, you should be very careful as well. I'll just link it. If you go through Isanamo, you should be very careful as well. Um, there are, there's a Russian corporation that um, actually they, they sit on the gate with catalysts. They, they, are, they, they did that a bit, they do that a bit differently. 
thanks to Sudo for the catalyst. If you see a catalyst on a gate or a thresher, um, that's most likely someone who wants to, to gank you if they just sit there. So countermeasures, what can you do against those guys? Well, first you can uh, have a look at your fittings. Um, you can fit for tank. As we see, Tuzuro actually didn't fit any tank there, which means he took a total damage of 1,655. That's not much. That's, um, that's really not much. Uh, you should be able to tank a lot more with the hauler, so you can actually at least haul um, the odd destroyer or something that comes uh, against you. So you, you you have a look at some fittings. What you can do is have a look at the pages of EVE University. Um, they have a lot of fitting um, suggestions for you, for haulers as well. And most I saw are, are actually pretty good. They, they work. Um, but it's not the only thing. It, it's it, that's a basic thing. That that's that should be the normal thing to do. You should be able to identify scams. One of the scams, uh, as I said, is um, putting a, a worthless stuff into a courier contract with a high collateral in hopes that you will get ganked or to gank you yourself. Um, unfortunately. It, that case is not as easy to spot as it sounds because you, you would normally say, well, if there is something with five cubic meters um, and a collateral of one billion, then I just don't transport it. Well, you could have that rationale, but it actually does work because there are items in the game that are very valuable. If you think about the EVE Central link that I showed you before, the Kaldari Navy Adaptive Invulnerability Field is a very small item. It's, I think, five uh, cubic meters, but it sells for 380 million. So two of those have uh, a contract value of 720 million, and they are just 10 cubic meters. So you don't know if it's just some titanium or those modules. Um, the more obvious scams you can avoid. Um, you should always be sure that the courier contract does not go through LOSIC. You should be very um, careful with high collateral contracts that go through Niarja or Uedama or Isanamo. Um, better use or better do some low collateral contracts through there first to to get to know to get to know the systems, to get to know the players that are around there often. Um, one thing that you can do um, is. Uh, that, that counters a lot, actually. If you accept a contract, then the one who made the contract sees that you accepted it, and he sees who you are. So if I, as Switch Hacky, accept a contract, and I undock in my hauler, and I fly towards uh, Jita, then he knows when I am in system. He knows when I jumped into system, where I move, and so on, because he sees me in, in the local chat. right? But what you can do is you accept the contract, you move it over to a different character. You can do that. Um, you, you have a cargo package. It has a plastic wrap around it, actually. It, it, it says so, plastic wrap. You can move that um, with, a, with an item exchange contract from, from one character to another and undock in that character. So that's something that you can do. You are not as easily spottable then. Uh, they don't know that you are carrying their contract, right? Well, what they can do, of course, is scan your ship and then know, oh, that's my one Tritanium right there. That's the character who was moving my contract. So what we want to do is at least avoid being scanned in a trade hub. And that's actually possible. Um, one possibility to do that, or actually the only possibility to do that is have a, an Insta undock bookmark. Insta undock means you can go, you, you, well, you know that if you undock from a station, you come out at a certain speed. That's actually, it's 100% or even more than 100% of your normal speed. So it, it, you, it, they, the stations, they shoot you out. You are just not sitting there with zero velocity. They shoot you out and you can 
do what you want. In the first seconds after you, you log out, I think it's 10 seconds, you are invulnerable. So no one can actually click on you. Um, if you try to click, then it will, the, there is a little uh, information uh, pop-up in game that says this tar the target is invulnerable. Now, what you could do, if you have a target in space in the direction that you just undocked and hit warp on that target, you would go into warp immediately because you are at the speed to warp and you are in the direction to warp. And that's something that you, that you use. Um, so what you want to do is make a warp spot into the direction you get undocked. Um, the system, well, 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 the game helps there. You, you can uh, activate the so-called tactical overlay um, it's on the lower right in your uh, next to your capacitor, and it gives you one of the maybe you, you saw that already the dish with the um, with the distances and so on. So it, it opens the tactical overlay, and you can navigate to to actually hold the the dimensions quite well to to be in one plane uh, with the undock and so on. Um, that's something that you want to do. You want to have insta undocks, not if you are in a freighter. If you are in a freighter, you don't want to have those because you can go into warp immediately. But if someone sees you warp to an insta undock, he will warp there as well and tr start to bump you. Um, so you can't go into warp again. If you are in a freighter, you don't want to use insta undocks. If you are in anything else, um, T1 or T2 holders, you normally would want to go to insta undocks because insta undocks are 300, 500, or 1,000 kilometers away. You have to make them before, obviously. Um, and uh, you warp there and you, you are 1,000 kilometers away. Nobody has that kind of targeting range to, to actually um, target and scan you there. So from there, you make your way to the gate, to the next gate. And then you hope that you don't uh, get scanned there as well. So you avoid the scan at that first gate. Um, that's insta undocks. What you also want to do, by the way, is, an, is have an insta dock. You know that um, when you when you sometimes when you warp to a station, you land about one thousand meters off, and you have to accelerate and move those thousand meters until you actually can dock. Um, if you sit around Jita for for a while, you will see that that's actually where uh, many gankers, um, um, well, yeah, shoot their targets. Um, they wait for a hauler to land well, a, a bit off of the station and will go to work then. It's just the game mechanics. So an insta dock means you make a bookmark inside that docking ring of the station. So you, you warp to a station, then you move further like 3,000 or 4,000 meters, and there you make a bookmark. And that's the bookmark you will always warp to when you want to dock. So you never land outside of the docking ring. So you want to have, have a bookmark. Uh, by the way, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, I forgot to mention with the T2, T2 industrial hulls, if you fly a blockade runner, you are immune to, to uh, cargo scans. So they can target you, they can scan you, but they don't get a result for blockade runners. So no one can know what's in your cargo hold. That sounds pretty good um, at first, but then you realize that actually it makes you a very interesting target because it's kind of a loot pinata. You don't know what's in here, so you, you just whack on it and you hope for the best, right? It could be 15 plaques, could just be nothing. Um, you have to know that. So blockade runners should use insta undocks and insta docks all the time. Uh, blockade runners can actually um, move through HiSec very quickly and very um, securely. They are very fast while warping, and they have um, the possibility, as I said, to fit um, a covert ops cloak. And that's another uh, thing I want to talk about with countermeasures. Maybe some of you know the um, cloak plus uh, cloak and MWD trick. If not, I will, I will post a link uh, later to a YouTube video that explains it quite well. Um, basically, what it does is um, if, you, if you are cloaked at a gate and you want to warp somewhere but not be targeted in, in that time, what you can do is you click um, a line 
to the, the destination you want to walk to. So you hit the button align in that little selected item window align, then you immediately hit the button for your for a, a fitted cloak. It can be on any ship. You hit the cloak button and then in the within the next second, so you should do it immediately, you hit the button for the micro warp drive that you should have fitted for that. What happens then is your ship will Oh yeah. I I, I thought that no, actually Akron. There is a there is a text there, but um, a video. I will I will post a video later, um, because it's it's quite a difficult coordination to do that. Um, so it's a line, cloak, MWD, the micro warp drive. What would happen then is your ship accelerates because the micro warp drive, even though the cloak is activating, will still activate. It does so if you click it with, with within one second. So your ship will accelerate to the micro warp drive um, um, velocity, but actually a bit lower because the the cloak makes your ship go slower, right? And the cloak will end immediately after that. Um, and when the cloak ends, your ship is at a speed that is very close or even higher than your warp speed. Um, so you can go into warp without them being able to target you. It is so easy if you see the video. Uh, I wanted to, to quickly describe it to you, but you should um, have a look at the video that I will uh, look for and then um, practice it because it makes you practically invulnerable at a gate when you start at the gate. So people will not be able to bump you, will not be able to to um, scan you, will not be able to target you to, to get a warp scrambler on you. Um, that's a pretty good thing to do. Also, there is a, uh, uh, lastly, there is a, a, an autopilot option in game. Um, you can make some experiences with that. You, you can just uh, fly around in an empty aula. Um, so you, you can um, fly with autopilot, but you should never fly with autopilot in those hotspots that I linked or close to those. So that means one or two systems next to the systems I linked, you should not fly with uh, with autopilot because that makes you very easy to, to catch. If you fly with autopilot, you might have noticed that you actually go out of warp 15 kilometers from the destination gate, and that gives your enemy 15 kilometers to target you, bump you, shoot you, whatever. So that's for some, sorry, oh, yeah. Yeah, a ninja. Uh, Acheron, so there is, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm basically um, through with a lot of what I want to say. There are so many points I should go over because they are very important, but uh, it's, it's, it's already a bit late for, for the Q and A. So I guess we can jump right into that. Acheron, you, you uh, had two question marks there about the cloak MWD trick. Is that correct? or Acheron, or how it's called, I don't know. Okay, there's no question there, it seems. Okay. Well, yeah, um, we, we've touched on a lot of topics and I know it's very, it's very confusing, probably at the beginning. Um, there are so many things you you have to consider. So many fittings. As I said, um, you, you should do some some um, um, information hunting about the stuff you want to know. Um, Danielle, that's a very good um, question. Of course, it depends on. What you uh, first it depends on what you want to transport. Uh, if you can transport, well, as a Red Frog member, and we only use freighters, of course, I say freighter is the best ship because we have a lot of tank 
And even if we only transport 20 million in, in cargo, we should do that. But of course, freighters are very expensive. Freighters are very slow and you want to move uh, lower um, lower uh, collateral stuff uh, a bit faster maybe. Um, actually, all the races have pretty good, pretty good haulers. Um, and it is um, a certain personal philosophy what you, if you want to be a bit safer, you can tank Galente uh, industrials pretty well. If you want to be a bit faster, you can use, you should use Minmata uh, industrials. But uh, the differences between the, the, the different ships are not as big as in, um, are not as big as uh, with freighters, for example. With freighters, the, the differences are really noticeable. Um, so any T1 hauler will do. Um, the faster ones are normally the um, better option if tanked well. Uh, yeah, so you, well, you, you should, if you want to know which, which hauler to take, which ship to take, um, you should think about what you actually want to do, how much you want to transport, because they are quite different in that department. Um, use the contract, uh, use the compare tool uh, initially and ha have a look. I'll go through the questions there. Very low cargo through null, uh, best travel scepter or blockade runner. Um, for, for everyone, uh, what is a travel scepter? Travel scepter is uh, uh, an interceptor, which is a frigate, um, fitted in a way that uh, goes into warp, well, instantly, uh, well, if, we, if we believe the game mechanics, in, uh, be below two seconds. Um, they are immune to warp disruption bubbles, which of which you have a lot of stuff in, in uh, a lot of in null sec. They, they suck you out of warp. Uh, interceptors are Im not, um, are immune to that. So, I would say sub 100 cubic meters, Tavion, I would say it's a travel scepter. Um, James, that's a very, very um, yeah, valid uh, comment there. Uh, if the ping is bad, you might have problems with the travel scepter. Um, but Tavion, travel scepter only if properly tanked against all the damage that can come from smart bombs. Smart bombs will still be able to catch you. And if your Opponents know that you are coming. They can just bring more battleships to smart bomb you, of course. Um, but you should be fine against one or two battleships with smart bombs at a gate if you tank correctly. So I would say travel scepter for sub 100. Um, above that, yeah, um, I would probably go to to the blockade runner there. Let's have a look. Agronaut, uh, Jackdaw, Hackety, those are not really suitable for holding in null and low, maybe in, in high. Um, so the ping. Um, Johnsky, Johnsky A, uh, a basic fit of any hauler or what do you want? Yes, hauler. Okay, uh, just, just a T1 hauler then. Yes. Okay. Um, let's have a look. There are some fits I have. Just a second. Okay, um, I'll just link um, the page for So what you want to do 
um, when you when you fit a hauler is I'll just link the page for the sigil for an example of, of Eve University and we can talk about some some points there. Um, if you if you tank a hauler, you should never um, be too rely reliant on um, active tank uh, because you might forget to activate it in in a pinch. So if someone is, uh, shoots you, uh, you are too too excited maybe <laughs> or too afraid to and you forget to activate your tank. So if you have a look at the the link I just posted to the sigil um, part of the Eve University site, you will see that each of those sigil has one of those orange modules. That's an adaptive invulnerability field. Um, so basically, you want to have shield extenders first. And if you have a look at the first, uh, the fifth one, you see that it has three large shield extenders, and then they added the in, uh, adaptive and vulnerability field. So if you take away one of those four modules, you should always take the way, uh, away the invulnerability field first, because you might uh, forget them. Uh, so passive tank is, is king with haulers, but you should also be able to align um, very quickly. So if you have a look on the fourth, result there. Actually, it's called Sigil 4 Seconds Warp Out. Um, that, has a, that has two large shield extenders in the mid slots and then two adaptive invulnerability, invulnerability fields. I think it would not have um, enough uh, power grid for a third large shield extender. Um, So what you see there, it has in the low slots, it had actually inertial stabilizers. Those uh, make you a bit more agile. Um, what it doesn't have, unfortunately, um, is a micro warp drive. So if I use a sigil, which is already a bit more agile, then I would like to be able to do that um, cloak and micro warp drive trick. Um, as you see, the third result actually has a micro warp drive and a cloak. And it's fitted for um, large cargo hold there. So if I would say, if if I were you, I would probably um, switch between the third and fourth result, depending on which amount of cargo I want to haul. So passive tank, the shield extenders. Um, a micro warp drive, I would have fitted. Um, yeah, I would have fitted the micro warp drive and the cloak for the cloak MWD trick. And then you switch out the low slots for um, cargo extenders. But as I said, um, yeah, it's actually good to have passive tank. Well, of course, if you see a tornado at the gate, or catalysts at the gate, you know that they might shoot you. And in that case, you should always think about, or you should always remember to act, to um, activate any um, shield hardness you have there. Uh, James, uh, to your comment, um, um, if you have a very bad server ping, then insta warp is actually yeah, um, it's it's a hard thing to do. Um, well, yeah, I don't really know what to what to say uh, to that. Uh, maybe you should move to Europe then. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually I. It's it's having a bad server ping is really a bad thing about uh, about many stuff in in the game, and it doesn't. Oh yeah, okay, James. Then yeah, then that's not not a problem. Ah, uh, by the way, because I I I, I just see it on a, on a page there of um, Eve Wiki. Um, there is a there is a um, formula, so to say. Um, about how much cargo you should have uh, with uh, which uh, value. Because if um, your cargo is very precious and it's small, then um, 
they can well it's it's a no brainer for you because they can transport it away very quickly is your if your cargo is is very large if you have a uh, mineral um, um, mineral uh, cargo so to say if you have many minerals in your cargo hold then and you and they shoot you the the minerals drop maybe but um, maybe they can't take all of them uh, away you know uh, because they take quite quite a lot of space and what uh, they say is you should three million is So that's that's roughly the formula. Three million is per one thousand EHP. Um, EHP are um, effective hit points. So that's the hit points that you have if your modules are active, your active modules. Um, you can see the effective hit points in tools like PyFAR or EFT, where you where you can um, click together fits. So that's uh, where you see EFT. Uh, sorry, EHP. Um, so if you know you have uh, 10,000 EHP, uh, then you know you should um, transport at most 30 million ISK in your, your cargo. Because uh, that formula um, tells the gankers how much they have to bring. Because uh, the gankers are, are actually very good at math. So they, they know their ships do um, this or that amount of damage per second and they can shoot away this amount of effective hit points per second so they, they actually know how much ships uh, how many ships to bring how much firepower to bring uh, before uh, for certain ship types um, they calculate that beforehand sometimes they make mistakes which uh, leaves you in low armor for example but that's uh, roughly the calculation that um, that is thrown out there but uh, as a freighter holder, I can tell you, um, very often they just uh, kill empty freighters just for the fun of it. Um, so you, the, the, and in that case, it was zero cargo. Contractors. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a very good question to zero. Um, of course, as as much as possible, right? No, and you don't want to overpay. Um, so, as a um, there are two big hauling corporations uh, in New Eden for for um, hauling, um, and. A lot of smaller ones, of course. There's Red Frog, there's PushX. PushX is a bit cheaper in most cases than, than um, Red Frog. Um, and Red Frog has um, prices that go, um, I think it's three, yeah, I don't think it, I know it's 3.5 million per contract and 1.5 million per jump. So if you move, one jump that's five million 3.5 plus one well, 1.5 um, that is compared to public prices um, a bit high so what you should calculate is how many jumps your route is and then pick a good number for um uh, for the reward i would say uh, an adequate reward for people to actually do it is um, around 700,000 to 1 million isk per jump. So if you have 10 jumps, you should pay them uh, 10 to 12 uh, million. And I, th I would say that's a, that's a good way of paying. Um, you do have um, quite a lot of um, competition there. So um, prices will tend to get um, lower and lower from time to time, even, especially in high activity times like the weekend. Um, yeah, but that's, I would say that's an adequate reward without overpaying there. Um, Sinovin, that's uh, pretty good, uh, a pretty good question. Uh, it of course it uh, totally depends. So I've I've linked um, a contract before that I did 
Um, so that's uh, 27.5 million. Um, from this, in Redrock, you, you have to subtract uh, around 15% for our own um, um, for our own insurance, sorry, the White Frog insurance. We have we have an own insurance program. So if you if you take away um, ten percent, fifteen percent of that, you end up with twenty four million. Let's say um, four of those contracts um, will end up with one hundred million. Then, but you see, it's a sixteen jump route. 16 jumps, let's have a look. Uh, 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 uh. Let me have a look. Yeah, I can't see it right here, but okay. If I am if I'm flying um, at the keyboard and I hit jump as fast as possible, um, and basically, I don't slack on the route. I can take those 16 jumps in around uh, 35 minutes. So if I if I don't do anything else, if I if I concentrate on that, I can do that in 25 minutes. Uh, uh, sorry, um, 35 minutes. So theoretically, you would be able to make 100 million in about two hours. But um, of course, that. Um, that's only if there are contracts that go to, for well, in this case, for example, I went from Jita to Shows Run. So if there were three more contracts from Shows Run to Jita, and then another from Jita to Shows Run, and so on, um, then I would have, then I would be uh, able to make a lot of money very quickly. Um, but that's not the case normally. Um, if contracts go uh, between trade hubs, so for example, if there is an um, Amar Jita contract. That one gets picked very quickly by, by frogs, by the way. Um, so I can move from Amar to Jita, and then I can move from Jita to Amar back again, because there's always, well, almost always there is a Jita Amar uh, contract there. Um, 100 million is possible, let's say, possible um, in one day. Um, if you invest some hours in there, you, yeah. Um, it depends on your level of activity. But 100 million in one day is realistic, but you can't do that every day because that's a lot of clicking jump. <laughs> James, yeah, yeah. Okay, the 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 rewards in Black Frog are a bit higher, uh, but of course you have to uh, you have to do some preparation there as well because you have to you can't just undock and fly there, right? You have to you have to go there with your Sino character and and jump them in and so on. Um, but I think what you want to say here is that the rewards in Black Frog are a bit higher um, compared to the hours you have to invest, and that's that's basically true. But it needs a lot of preparation and also a lot of invest before. Are there more questions at this time? Doesn't look like it. Oh, there's one, Tavion. Ha. Okay, yeah, well, that, that of course is a bit uh, off topic for of hauling 101. <laughs> um, when there's, no, 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 well, it, it's a valid question. Um, when there are, is a null pipe, where there is a lot going on, uh, the only thing you actually can do is um, go there at a different time than anyone else. So uh, directly after downtime before they flocked in is, is a good way or um, basically have a look at 
how active or who is active and how they how they uh, at which times they shoot people and so on but um well it, if if you go to a null pipe and 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 let's say you, you say that the, not the destination station but a station in between um you can try to to um to go around in in different systems that are not that obvious uh but yeah it's it's basically the question of when to light the sino is um more important than where to to light it No problem. Okay, I've promised you a link to a Cloak MWD video, and I uh, had a look already, but there's not one that really catch my eye there. Um, Well, that one's good as any. Um, it was just the first result. Uh, if if you have um, if you have a bit of time, just uh, um, look for Eve Cloak MWD uh, on YouTube. You will f find uh, ten to twenty videos that you can watch. There will be one that one video that uh, tells you exactly uh, how it works in the yeah in the words that you want to know. Um, he does it with a battleship in this video, which is <laughs> not a bad way of training for that, because uh, haulers are almost as slow as battleships. Um, but it works the same way with uh, with any ship. So every every time it's the same principle. Let's have a look, Greta. Yeah, that was the second video I clicked actually. That might be a bit better, Greta. Uh, your link because it's a hauler. I'm um, sorry, it's a bit more realistic, so to say. And you see how how gate jumps looked before our fancy new animations with that black tunnel, because it was just you you just you just switched, right? <laughs> yeah, in that video, it's um, it's um, very nicely done. So everyone. Uh, use Greta's link for explanation of the cloak MWD trick. Uh, if you plan to do it, and you should do it, um, you should definitely also practice it uh, on the test server, practice it in quiet systems. You should um, be able to know exactly when to click which button. And you, you should have done it around 10 to 20 times before you have to do it in live setting because adrenaline will um, kick in and you will not uh, find the buttons quickly enough if you have to think. So it has to be automatic. Okay, yeah. So uh, once again, um, for fitting considerations, you should uh, consult the Eve Yoni um, pages, but also you can freely add me as a contact and contact me at any time if you want. If uh, you are interested in freighter hauling, um, let's see, I, I, I've, I've spoken to, to Danielle and uh, Unit about making it a, a bit of a mini series maybe and doing some more, um, yeah, doing some more lectures about uh, hauling with uh, freighters hauling with jump freighters and so on what to expect there um yeah so if you have any question about about hauling and freighter hauling especially you can hit me up at any time i will haul for you yes um <laughs> uh, your 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 best path for me to haul for you would be to go into uh channel RF freight. That's RF freight. Um, have a look at the message there, the the MOTD message of the day, and um, 
follow the steps. It's pretty easy to do. We have a calculation tool for you, so you know exactly what to put where. You don't have to think about how much collateral is, or how much reward is 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 good, and and so on. We 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 made the math. We did the math for you, so to say. We didn't make the math. <laughs> Ah, and by the way, if you want to actually haul with us, not not only let us haul for you, you can um, uh, go to channel Profit. Profit is our recruitment channel. And have a look at that message of the day as well, um, because it tells you how to how you would get into Redfrog, what uh, requirements are there, and so on. So if that's a path you, you can see yourself uh, go, then yeah, just have a look at that channel. And uh, that's it for me, Danielle, if you want to take it away or something. I think we are all done with this class. Um, the